start with first parental control. Mm -hmm. That's first key. Um, When you're, everything is online, everything is digital. Um, You you can't go to physical places, but most kids are going to say, hey, mom, can I get the credit card? I need V-Bucks for Fortnite or whatever game. So you need to make sure you have parental control knowing where your money goes because there are some horror stories where kids you know, buy over $300 worth of virtual items for a game that's going to last for about a year. Mm. And so parental controls with that. You can also use parental control, um, controls for your consoles and your PC to actually stop the game, right? So mm. two hours, if it's going past two to three hours, um, gaming recommends every hour that you take a break stretch you move your eyes around because what's happening y'all this is mike d with black fathers now where we're bringing the village to the brothers every couple of weeks you can look forward to a quick inspirational message or a thought-provoking guest with knowledge and wisdom all geared towards helping you be the best father that you can be we're bringing the village to you now is your turn to do something with what you learn all right y'all Let's go. What's going on, fellas? This is Mike D, Mr. Double Down on You, with another episode of Black Fathers Now. And I have a really, really, really cool conversation today. And um, and it's with a brother that's doing something in an area that some of us as dads with kids question. And the guy that I have is my man, Cleveland Hilton. Now, Cleveland's originally from Mobile, Alabama. He is an HBCU grad. He's a graduate of Alabama A&M. He currently works in education, but he's also a huge gamer. So you'll find him on Twitch and all these other gaming platforms. I'll let him, you know, kind of expound upon that. But he's also, you know, in the social climate that we've been living in over the last few months, He's now come to a place in which he's using gaming as, you know, in his platform on gaming for social justice as well. So we'll dive into that. But brothers, I want y'all to welcome my man, my friend, Cleveland Hilton. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? How How you doing? How you guys doing? (laughs) We all met. Well, I'm doing well. And I assume those on the other side of this thing are doing well, too, because they listening to Black Fathers now. They can't help but to do well. (laughs) <laughs> and in listening to dynamic stories like my man Cleveland Hilton, I mean, you can't help but to to be living on cloud nine, man. So, yeah, no, I'm doing well, brother. I appreciate you for coming on and taking time out of your schedule, man. Hey, no problem, man. Thanks. Uh, it's an honor to be here. I appreciate it. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. And so before we get started, um, I always like to have the brothers give shout outs because the tagline of Black Fathers Now is bringing the village to the brothers. And so who are we? without those folks that have allowed us to get here or have helped us to get to where we are today, but then also those that may be on a day-to-day basis, day-to-day basis support us. So before we get started on your story, give a shout out, brother, to those that are helping you do what you do. Well, well, first, I want to give a shout out to Mr. Olivier, who's actually one of your uh, guests on the Black Fathers Now podcast. Um, we were able to do our own podcast, which is Football Be Football. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Olivier. Um, that's that's my boy. So we're we're rocking out podcasts. Then also, I want to thank everyone in the City Fam, which is basically my Twitch followers. So mm-hmm. you know, shout out to the City Fam that helped me not only push this uh, Black Lives Matter agenda, but also uh, dealt with social injustice by helping me doing my stream and making my job a lot more easier. So shout mm-hmm. out. Gotcha. You said city, you said city fam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Got yeah. And we'll let you, I guess, expound upon that in a little uh-huh. bit because that's within your Twitch community. Correct. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. 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 Well, cool, man. And so, and, and he referenced Olivier Mujere, which was one of the guests, a previous guest on black fathers now. And if you've not gone back through, you need to go back through black fathers now and just Google or search Olivier Mujere. His story is absolutely amazing. He's a mutual friend of both Cleveland and I's. And um, Olivier is originally from Rwanda and the brother's doing his thing in the realm of education, but he also is doing so knowing or living through the Rwandan genocide. So he grew up and lived through that and had an amazing journey and story. And we expound upon that in his episode of Black Fathers Now. So make sure to search back through to Olivier Mujeres to learn his story as well. So that's who Mm -hmm. uh, my man Cleveland was referencing. So you gave the shout outs, man. 
and we gave a little bit of your intro jump into your story a little bit brother like you know you're in education but then you're also in gaming talk to us a little bit about some of the inspirations and the things that led to you getting to that point yeah absolutely well just to start off um I come from a small town called Cavert, Alabama. It's about 20 to 30 minutes from Mobile, about 40 to 50 minutes between any grocery store. You have to drive literally 40 to 50 minutes to go there. Um, so, you know, stated I'm the only child. So, you know, I had to do something. You know, my mom was like, you, you too hyper. So <laughs> she brought me a uh, system called the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. I was about three to four, and then I got hooked. And then when the um, Super Nintendo came out, that was a wrap. So that was my that was my pass on hobby. And of course, I'm still based in that generation where you still had to go outside and play and make sure you your butt was back in before the lights went out. But still, during that time um, on weekends, I really got in, got into gaming. My personality I always want to help people, right? So me being the only child, I kind of went. Um, the other way, those spectrum are wanting to share things. I wanted to share things with my friends, with my family, people I was close to. So I think that was like the caveat that was in my mind that I wanted to help. Mm. So uh, that definitely helped guide me to where I am now, helping other people. Mm. These kids, paying it back. So, so basically, again, gaming, like, you know, I'm from the era, I remember when I think I was nine or 10 when we got our first Nintendo. So it was, you know, I kind of grew up in that particular generation as well. But it's funny, you do bring up the fact that we're from the generation where you had gaming or it wasn't gaming like you think of it now on a mobile device, but you had, you know, right. entertainment systems at the house, Nintendo, mm -hmm. Sega Genesis, whatever it may be. But you also had the duality of being required to also go outside and play and interact. So the notion of just sitting at home and gaming, which now seems to be a norm for kids, especially with their mobile phones and mobile gaming and, you know, gaming online with people from all over the world. It seems to be more of a, um, you know, more of a reality in which kids don't have to go outside because they can just game 24 seven. We didn't have that option because we were only limited to those folks that were connected to our system sitting in the room next to us, you know? Right. Exactly, exactly. So it was, it's like this, this, different, this different perspective. And, um, and I think because of that, we came from the scenario from the era of there was outside play and gaming. And so mm -hmm. some of us kind of poo-poo gaming, meaning some of us see a kid gaming and we automatically say like, man, put that game down and get outside and play, you right. know? Talk to us a little bit about the new generation, the new generation of gaming, the evolvement or the evolution of, you know, online gaming as well. Talk to us a little bit about how that's come into play, but then some of the pros and cons of it in today's day and age. Right. I mean, you know, you hit it right there, Mike. Um, if you think about our generation, you know, we had the home console, but that wasn't the most exclusive thing that we would do for as far as entertainment. We actually had an arcade. Arcades was a big thing. You actually mm. actually go earn your money to get your quarters, play it, and then that's how you got your, your community there, right? So those generations, some of those people, and black fathers now, have, like, they have matured, right? So it's, like, it's synonymous, like, but well, these kids are lazy. You know, back in my day, I had to go to the arcade. I had to go and do that. But it's just, it's just a different way. You know, change energizes us. But that's that's my motto. So what those changes is, is now everything is online, you know, due to the the financial impact of from the 90s to the 2000s. Arcade cabinets are not as relevant. Hmm. Malls are not even relevant now due to Amazon. So it's hard to have a place where you can just have that community. So it's switched to online. So PlayStation, even Sega Dreamcast, you know, in the 2000s had in the um, 1990s was trying out to do that internet thing. If you wasn't a PC gamer that had LAN cable, you you just had to stick with your friends. That shift into that online gaming has really opened up the floodgates of gaming and then interacting with people. That's mm. what came into the, the, the beginning of Twitch. Yeah, hold on, because you, you, you're talking, you mentioned something I was catching on the concept of the interactions between people. Because when we think about, and again, this is the mindset shift, brothers, for guys who have kids that are into gaming and all of that. Back in the day, 
you were limited to interact with people based from a gaming perspective, based off of folks that were in your room with another controller or the people that you were physically interacting with in the arcade. Now, right. because this thing is decentralized and everything's on mobile or data or whatnot, you have the ability to communicate with, network with, and build with people from all over the world through your gaming device. And so right. kids are, and you mentioned the concept of how things change and evolve, kids are still building community. They're just doing so through a different means or through a right. different muse or with a different methodology. And in 2020, that methodology for a lot of kids is gaming and using these online gaming platforms. Right, exactly. Interesting. I think you get around the head, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a, that, and, and that's a really cool perspective because we have to explain that because, again, if you're not in the world of gaming, you just think they're out there zoned out doing this. But in a way, they could mm-hmm. be building community. They could be building skills. They could be building hand-eye coordination and figuring things out and strategizing and problem solving. They could be doing all of these things, but just through a muse that you don't understand. Right. Interesting. Right. Yeah, and I think with the the with Twitch now and all of those uh, uh, we, we call them the broadcast systems used to be Mixer, but Mixer is gone. Um, we have the webcam now, mm-hmm. so even then you're you're focusing on uh, how you're presenting yourself, how are you talking, how do you you know how, how how do you look? Are you looking professional? So there's there are so many ways that you can help on the social aspect side too, because that is also a, a stereotype about gamers is that they're not social. They're loose. So. But, you, but you know, it's funny. Stereotypes are rooted in perceptions and perceptions are rooted in your experiences. And so again, generationally, right? You take somebody who's over the age of 35 thinking about what did that prototypical gamer look like from when I was a kid and it right. was, you know, the kid, the, you know, the dude who doesn't have any friends that sits in his mama's basement, hadn't taken a shower. Pocket protector. For, yeah, pocket protector, <laughs> hadn't taken a shower in three or four days. And he's yeah. got headphones on and he's sitting there, you know, gaming on his computer or gaming on a system. That's right. the image that we have. But to your point, it's funny how things have shifted because, because of webcams, because of video, because of presentation, but now because of the platform in which you have gamers who are getting full scholarships to go to school, you know, as gamers, you got inner scholastic uh, gaming teams where they compete right. with other co- colleges from around the world, you know, in gaming or on various games, you have to present yourself well and you have to communicate in a certain way. So you're actually building life skills through exactly. gaming wow and you know what's funny I, I, i'm i'm gonna throw it back to you in a second i mm-hmm. think back to the notion of you're in education but then you're also a gamer how that intersectionality makes you a prime entity to connect with young folks specifically young boys oh gosh yes i will say that's one big thing during the summer we have the boys and girls club here so they look forward to. They're just like, oh, okay, Mr. Hilton. I know he's 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 a gamer. Can you come see me on Street Fighter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I'll play with you. And then that's just another connection piece of those kids. It's like, okay, all right, we're doing this, but you need to make sure you're doing your homework, making sure what what high school are you going to? Are you mm-hmm. thinking about career advancement? Because with anything, moderation is key, right? Mm-hmm. So you can game, but make sure it's in moderation and making sure that you have a balance in your life. And I think those stereotypes are changing now because of those are building those life skills and actually get a career in gaming. Mm. So it's a multi-million dollar, billion dollar industry now. So mm, That's interesting, interesting. And so when you think about that and we think about the positives to gaming, you know, because you're in the midst of this, you know, what are some things that parents need to be aware of maybe on the downside of gaming? Like, I mean, from a security perspective, from the standpoint of, you know, young kids and how they can connect and interact with people, you know, throw out some things that, you know, parents need to be aware of as well, brother. All right. Well, first, parental control. Mm -hmm. That's first key. Um, When you're, everything is online, everything is digital. Um, You you can't go to physical places, but most kids are going to say, hey, mom, can I get the credit card? I need V-Bucks for Fortnite or whatever game. So you need to make sure you have parental control, knowing where your money goes, because there are some horror stories where kids you know, 
buy over three hundred dollars worth of virtual items for a game that's going to last for about a year. Mm. And so parental controls with that. You can also use parental um, controls for your consoles and your PC to actually stop the game. Right. So mm. two hours. If it's going past two to three hours, um, gaming recommends every hour that you take a break, stretch, you move your eyes around because it creates eye strain and you don't want to get blood clots. Right. Mm. So mm. Some people gain four, five, six hours. Mm. No. I'm one of those people, but I make sure I take a break and stretch and do that often. Um, second, you need to make sure moderation is key. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that helped me also have control, I think it's a mental thing, is my parents would not let me play the video game Monday through Friday. Friday. Mm, that's good. That was the thing. Monday through Thursday, you cannot touch that game. All right? Monitor TV, but you need to make sure you're doing your homework and education is key. That way, you can also reward your kids because they'll be looking forward towards the weekend. All right? Mm -hmm. So more family time, but also playing video games. So you connect that piece. Mm. So that's a psych psychological thing. And other warnings is just make sure that you monitor your kids when they're aiming with those headsets. When they go into those multiplayer games like Call of Duty, there could be a lot of racism, could be a lot of slurs. Just make sure that you monitor and take care because you can actually connect your Bluetooth to that video chat to listen what they're talking about. So, mm, that's that's actually a big piece. one. Yeah, big key. And then, and what about like, um, as far as like, you know, again, they're virtual, but the notion of connecting with people and, you know, guardrails so that you can either train your kids, hey, this is just a game, do not meet anybody from oh. all of this. Like, what, what are your recommendations there, dude? Recommendations there is this um, kind of like what I did when I started my Twitch. I didn't put my face up. I didn't put any type of information. So make sure your kid does not divulge or say anything about location. The mm. next thing I would say is state. Mm. I'm from this state, and that's it. Age, mm. age is also, but you need to make sure that you watch your kids' friend list as well. Uh, what I would do is I would monitor your kids' friend list. Mm. Ask them each and every one. Not every kid is going to have a thousand friends, but they're going to have three to four that they always talk to. They're always going to play Call of Duty. They're always going to play whatever game. But you need to make sure that you ask those kids. Ask, ask your kid who are these people. Where are they from? And if if it comes to push comes to shove, let me talk to them personally. Mm, man, fellas, I hope y'all are paying attention. Ladies, too, because y'all tune in to what we're talking about. But this is applicable to anybody with kids who are in gaming. There is a huge upside. I mean, kids can go to college for free. There's opportunities. Right. There are people making millions and millions and millions of dollars gaming right now. That is legit. But there's a double-edged sword to this because on the flip side of it, you have to monitor, especially minor kids, their interactions. You know, a couple of the tips that Cleveland left, he was saying, you know, you got to monitor, you know, spending because some of these games have in-game purchases and you can blink and, you know, the kid to spend a few hundred bucks or more, <laughs> you know, <Right>. buying <laughs> things within the game. And so you have to put stop gaps or guardrails in place, but be very mindful of that. Another one is time limits. He said gaming, the gaming consoles or the games recommend you to take a break every hour. But um, a lot of people don't always do that. But there are some dangers to staying locked into a game for a considerable amount of time. Put time limits on your kids. Um, one of the things he mentioned was his parents didn't allow him to play games Monday through Thursday. So it was kind of a weekend thing, which could also be leveraged as a reward. And it's funny you say that my mom, Maggie Dorsey, will probably nod her head listening because she did that with games and with TV. Yeah. So during the week. <laughs> During the week, man, it was struggling. We were like the struggle bus in regards to <laughs> playing our Nintendo and watching TV every so often, like the Cosby show or something like that. But yeah, you know, but that's why we went ham on TGIF on Friday nights. <laughs> we were right. like, man, shoot, we've been, you know, we've been deprived all week. So, <laughs> but anyway, moderation is a recommendation. Another thing that he says, if your kids are playing on these platforms, location blindness, make sure that your kids keep a um, basically don't give away specific locational information about themselves. So the most they could probably give away is maybe their state, but even then you probably need to just encourage them to not give any information out about their real name, where they're located and all of that, because there are some non, you know, savory characters out there. And so as they interact with people out there, you think about interacting with strangers, make sure that your kids are location blind, meaning 
They don't give away information as to where they physically are. And then also, and this is the last one that he dropped, which is extremely important. Make sure to go through your kids friend list. Um, and I would say if your kids, you know, under a certain age, if they're on social media, you need to do the same thing as well. Um, yeah. You need to go through there. If they got an iPhone, go through their contacts. If you if they got a regular phone, you need to go through all of that and see who they're connecting with, who they're texting. I think that's extremely important as well. Again, under a certain age, because you just want to protect your kids because sometimes they don't know what they don't know. And it's our job as dads, as fathers, as black men to protect them. So Fellas, I, pay attention. Cleveland dropped some gems there for the kids who are gaming because that's just the reality of what's going on, but to be mindful of so that, you know, they can have a good time, but you can protect them in the process. All right. All right. Dude, that's, that's some good stuff, man. And so you threw out the name of the, 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 um, the term Twitch more than once here. Can mm -hmm. you explain Twitch to the audience for folks that maybe aren't in the realm of gaming? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I don't want to go with jargon. I'll go ahead and explain it to you guys. So Twitch is basically an open broadcast system where you can actually uh, host and actually put videos to you playing video games. So think of it as like ABC, MSNBC, um, those broadcast systems on television. As you, the individual, you're able to have your own channel on Twitch. So, for example, my Twitch channel is at Cleveland, not the city one. You tune in, you come in, I have my own music, I play my own video games, and I interact with people via the chat. And so people be able to chat with me. And then also there's another um, app called Discord where they can actually come in my Discord and actually talk to me. You mm -hmm. know, feel, you know, um, telephone call. So, um, so yeah, that's basically Twitch. And you can do a multitude of things. It's just not gaming. Mm -hmm. um, one big Twitch person is, uh, all he does is just... Um, He's just an artist. He just every day he draws something and then he's able to sell it and give it to people that are in his following. Really? So it's a very unique thing you can do. So, 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 so Twitch is not just a game. I mean, it's primarily probably 90% gaming, but there are mm -hmm. other methods for utilizing oh, gotcha. it, another platform for mm -hmm. to connect with people in essence. Yeah, it used to be 90%. I think 80% now. 20% of people do IRL um, streams, which is just what we're doing right now. It mm. just chat. There's a category called just chatting. You mm. just talk about relevant issues or whatever you want to talk about, cooking channels. So yeah, Twitch is very has involved over the, the past years. Sure. Wow. That's interesting, man. And and it's and you know, because I hear Twitch being mentioned a lot on various platforms and people talk about it. And kids, if you mention Twitch to any, I mean, if you mention to little kids under the age of 10 or 12, they're gonna right. probably under the age of 16, they're all into it. Like that's just their thing. Oh, yeah. And um, but you but you're very much, you know, in the world of Twitch and you're utilizing it to game and stream your gaming and do competitions and things of that sort. Correct. Um, so what makes my Twitch unique is that I actually do charity tournaments, where I promote black businesses, um, doing breaks, uh, do fighting games. Uh, one fighting game that I do is Tekken, which is mm -hmm. huge in the fighting game community. Um, I also do uh, boxing style events where at the same time. While we're doing that, I'm also uh, pushing an agenda that Black Lives Matter. Mm. That's interesting. So you're basically hosting a Twitch channel, and this goes to what we mentioned in the intro, how you're using gaming as a mm. platform to push social justice. And so sure. with, your, with your Twitch, Twitch channel, I'm, I'm trying to get tongue tied. With your Twitch channel. <laughs> Do it all the time. <laughs> that's like a tongue tied. With your Twitch channel. Say it 30 times. <laughs> um, so with your Twitch channel, what you're doing is you're using that as an opportunity during the breaks to promote black owned businesses and push various social agendas that are um, that are out there in the in the under the scope of, you know, Black Lives Matter. Correct. That is fascinating, man. And, and since you've been doing that, like how, what's been the response to um, what's been the response to your, your, your promotion and your, your interest in, in the space of promoting black businesses and Black Lives Matter? That's a great question. Um, well, it has been very unique. Um, I would say that for at least I'm getting a lot of great reception from it. Um, people have um, said, well, I've never seen this before. I'm glad this is happening. So there's a need. So I'm glad we're on this platform because I don't want to be the sole person. So if there's mm -hmm. anybody that wants to be into Twitch and you, you say, well, I'm not a gamer, but you can do RLs, IRLs, um, streams, or just chatting. 
is to promote social justice. So I've got a lot of great feedback and I've got a lot of support from you. So I appreciate you for, for your support as well. No doubt, man. And, and so, and it's interesting with that because we, when you think about various platforms, a lot of times we get very dogmatic in regards to I'm stuck in this. Like I only use Facebook to do this and that's it. I don't want to learn Instagram. I don't want to learn Twitch or Snapchat or, you know, whatever other one, two, three social network that pops up, you know, every week. But the thing is, we have to be mindful of each particular platform has a different type of audience. And so if you're looking to get to a specific audience with your message, with your content, you need to become well versed in those different platforms. And so Twitch, I guess my understanding or my assumption, because I'm not, you know, heavily invested in Twitch myself, Mm -hmm. um, my assumption would be if you're looking to get to a younger demographic, that would probably be a legit platform. Can you talk a little bit about the, the demographics from your understanding of Twitch and who you would be interacting with should you kind of learn and play with that particular platform? Yeah, so this, bas- this basically, if you're on Twitch, you're, you're pretty much going to get a younger platform. But the way that I catered my channel, the way that I counter- uh, catered how I was doing it, I made it a little bit more adult. Right. So I didn't make it adult rated. I just made it more adult, more mature audience. So my demographic, you're looking from 20 and up. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the um, majority is 20 and up. The minority are young gamers that come in. So Mm -hmm. I don't I I get some young gamers, but I kind of get like due to maturity. They don't get to my channel because I'm not as YouTube happy, I guess. I don't go, you know, with the huge bright colors, the attention grabbing, you know, Mm. Um, what I am is I use black and gold fonts. I use real life issues. I use, um, I tell tips about um, telling people like these young generations, 20 and up, buy your stock, invest in things. I have a quote for today. Mm. I'll talk about um, um, Black Lives Matter. I'll talk about everything under the sun. You know, just to keep just to keep that agenda going of this social justice and also financial literacy. Sometimes I'll just stop the game and I just have a thought. And I'm like, hey, guys, are you working on your budget? Mm. So that's just how I catered to get that channel. And it took a while because I had to find myself. And mm. the reason why I thought of that charity tournament, I'm going to go back to Olivier. So Olivier, um, at our job, wrote a powerful letter talking about social injustice. And I've always been a person that that believed in Black Lives Matter and that we need to make sure we do better and America knows it. But I never had the uh, oh no. I didn't it never it didn't wake up into me. It didn't wake up until Olivier did that. Mm. I just like I am finna change my Twitch channel to cater towards that. Mm. That way if you are a black or a person of color, you're gonna feel comfortable in here and that we hear you and we're gonna mm. listen. So that's, that's the origin of the <laughs> that man, and that's such a powerful thing. And you, you dropped a few different things there. I mean, first, you know, the whole concept of there was something inside of you that needed to be sparked, and it was the letter written by your colleague that sparked this thing that was already there to come out, right? right. That was one. The other thing was you had something there, you just did not identify the method to deliver it. Right. And so to your point, you wanted to do something, you wanted to say something. And there's a lot of brothers and sisters listening to now. There's a lot of brothers listening that, to be completely honest, have something that they want to say. It's like, I got something to say, but I don't know how to say it. Or I don't feel like I have the platform or the method to, to say it. My whole thing is if you start walking in purpose, things open up for you to do that. Your gifts will make room for you. And so to right. your point, there was something that was there. It took this letter written by your colleague to spawn it or to become the catalyst. But then once that became the catalyst, you were then open to realizing something that you were already doing. And that was hosting these events and tournaments on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And now you have the, the inspiration or the, the why behind it. And, Mm -hmm. and you also have the method through Mm -hmm. this Twitch channel to promote social justice. And and what's interesting, you also dropped something there. I think there's a lot of wisdom that folks might gloss over. You know, you mentioned that your your channel is geared towards those that are 20 and up, which still skews younger based off of the other social media platforms, but 20 and up. 
but you're not being exclusive of the young people. You're just talking about things that resonate with an older demographic. So when you're thinking about promotion, when you're thinking about marketing, when you're thinking about messaging and communication, fellas, don't get so caught up in trying to be anti this or anti that or trying to be so bent on being so um, exclusive in how you operate. Just figure out your messaging, your purpose and your delivery and deliver that. And to be honest, your tribe will come to you. And if you want to speak to older people, then or, or the elders speak about topics that resonate with the elders. If you want to speak to middle aged folks, speak about things that resonate with middle aged folks. If you're trying to connect with teenagers and young adults with your messaging, speak about things that resonate with teenagers and young adults. Cleveland did that. He wasn't exclusive. He wasn't saying I'm being you know exclusive of the young folks. Like, no, I'm just going to speak about things that resonate with those that are 20 and up. Powerful, brother. Yeah, and it, and it took a while, and it, and it takes the process. So to let your audience know, it just takes it takes time. And just to give you an example, I didn't have the idea to promote the the uh, black businesses. It came to me from a follower of mine, someone in the city family, aka the city fam. He talked to me. He's like, "Man, I see what you're doing with this charity tournament. It just takes that seed. So that seed from Olivier." help me grow the plant to do the tournaments mm -hmm. and give money to Black Lives Matter and Breonna Taylor. Mm -hmm. That seed gave it to my follower. He said, we need to promote black businesses while we're doing that because we have the max amount of followers that comes in there. Mm -hmm. um, the tournament where I get your advertising, Mike, we were uh, top five on the Tekken channel on Twitch. Oh, wow. Crazy. That's awesome. Crazy. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's amazing. So. Dude, again, man, your gifts will make room for you and you plant the seed. And, you know, I heard something earlier today and it was talking about the concept of the seed. And it said, you know, whatever the seed results in is always bigger than the seed. Correct. Like that. That's Correct. so whether it's the fruit, whether it's the tree, whether it's the vegetable, whether it's the, whatever it is, whatever the seed grows into is always bigger than the seed. So just plant the seed and know that your harvest is always going to be bigger than the seed. And so, I mean, I, I applaud you for planting the seed because the thing is, once you plant a seed and you start to water it, you start to add a little bit of sun, you start to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little fertilizer, mm -hmm. you start dropping all these things on it. What ends up happening is that seed does grow. Now, we don't always know what it's going to grow into. See, that's the... <laughs> That's the, the difference between an actual garden seed and a seed in your life. The garden seed, you know, if I'm dropping an apple seed in the ground, I'm growing an apple tree or I'm dropping a watermelon seed. I'm growing a watermelon in your life. When you drop a seed, you don't always know what it's going to result in, but you have to have the faith to know that it's going to result in something that was bigger than the seed that was dropped. Marinated. Perfectly fair, Mike. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly what happened with this. So now that, that, that we're here now, we have charity tournaments that are supporting black businesses and it's, it's, it's not going to stop. We're going to continue to grow this platform and be able to talk about social injustices and how we can help. And one thing that we can help is via awareness and monetary gain. So we will continue to donate. Brother, man, fellas, listen to what Cleveland said, man. Walk in your purpose, walk in your gift, plant those seeds. Walk in your gift, walk in your purpose, plant those seeds. That's, that's your job. Now, right. everything else, it, it'll come into fruition, but walk in your gift, walk in your purpose, and plant your seed. And, and so, so, brother, when, when you know, we think about this, you're in education, you're mm -hmm. a gamer, you're running Twitch channels, you're doing things for social justice with Twitch and raising money for black businesses, creating awareness for black businesses, raising money for charities that are impacting black folks within the realm of, you know, Black Lives Matter. I mean, you're doing all of this stuff, man. Um, how can brothers listening and sisters watching and all of that stuff, how can folks get in contact with you, connect with you, learn more from you, check out what you have going on? What's the best way for everyone to connect with you, brother? Okay. Well, you guys can um, contact me via email at clevelandghilton at gmail.com. Um, on social, uh, that'll be on Twitter at Cleveland, N-O-T-T-A-G, so Cleveland not B. Um, that would be my gaming channel also. And then you can catch me you on said, Twitter. You said, you said Cleveland not what? I'm sorry, on Twitter? It's uh, Cleveland, N-O-T-T-A-G, so Cleveland okay. not B. 
Okay. Um, that would be my Twitter handle, and I'm there pretty much every single day on Twitter. Okay. Um, Twitch every Tuesday and Thursdays. Saturdays, if we have a big tournament, is at twitch.tv forward slash Cleveland, not the city one. Cleveland, not so Cleveland, not the city is your mm-hmm. twi- Twitter handle, Twitter handle, and uh, your Twitch as well. Cleveland, not uh, the city one at the end. Okay. I don't know who took the first one, but. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Cleveland, not so, the city one. Cleveland, not the city one. Cleveland, not the city one. So yeah, I had make sure to have that in the show notes, fellas, so y'all can connect with them. So definitely, if you got questions, email Cleveland G Hilton at gmail.com. On Twitter, it's Cleveland, not the city. On Twitter. Oh, Cleveland, not the. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. N O T T A G. Gotcha, gotcha. On Twitter, it's Cleveland, not the. And then mm-hmm. on Twitch, it's Cleveland, not the city one. Got it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That'll be in the show notes, fellas, so y'all can make sure to connect with Cleveland, um, get some insight, some wisdom, because the brother's doing some really awesome stuff. Make sure to support this guy, man, because we want to push these things forward, but then also learn, because learning from him may help you to connect more with your kids, and that's that's what this thing is all about, you dig? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And so before we get out of here, man, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the Black Fathers Now family about what you got going on? Any last messages, anything you want to throw out there? Yeah, well, I want to throw out there. Um, I'm not trying to throw a monkey wrench, but we would love to have you, Mike, to mm-hmm. come on our podcast, which is uh, Football v. Football. Okay. And that last part is spelled F-U-T-B-O-L. Um, you can catch us on Spotify, iTunes, just type that in, in Olivia. Okay, you say football v football, and I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all need to, um, y'all need to check that out because that is he and Olivier's podcast, football v football, and again, the second one is spelled F U T B O L, correct? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, Cleveland is from Mobile, Alabama. Olivier is from Rwanda. So when you say football in Rwanda, you're talking F U T B O L. When you're talking football in Mobile, Alabama, you're talking F O O T B A L L. So football v football is a really unique concept in which these brothers bring perspectives, dialogue, and debate from across the diaspora from two different continents. So y'all check that out again. Football v football. Wherever you get podcasts, we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. And so y'all can check that out on Spotify or iTunes. Y'all check it out. Subscribe. And, uh, and, and support, man, because these brothers are doing some really dope stuff, man. Hey, man, hey thank you. You're doing dope stuff as well, Mike. And it was a pleasure and an honor to be on the show. Man, I appreciate you, man. I, and so thank you so much for sharing this insight on gaming, some tips for parents, um, your contact info. Again, Cleveland G. Hilton at Gmail, Cleveland Not The on Twitter. And then on Twitch is Cleveland Not The City 1 on Twitch. And we'll have that on the, in the show notes as well as the link to Football V Football so you can check out his podcast with his man, Olivier. And so we thank you, brother, for sharing and you know, spending time with us today. Now, fellas, 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 as always, make sure to subscribe to Black Fathers Now via all the social media channels. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio. Any way you listen to podcasts, subscribe, leave ratings, and share, share, share. That helps us to grow in the search function so that we can grow this podcast and reach more people. And, um, you know, I thank y'all for everything as always. And until next time, y'all be blessed, well, and wise. And I'll holler at you. Peace. Yo, fellas, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And always, always, always visit blackfathersnow.com as well as follow Black Fathers Now on virtually every social media platform you can think of. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Just follow us and uh, and engage with us, man. Look forward to hearing from you. And uh, I guess until next time, I'll holler at you. Peace.